It's time for Shannon Vlogs number 13 with another reading update. Hey everyone, it's Shannon, and this time that I'm doing videos, I actually have two reading updates because I didn't watch really any movies. I actually didn't watch any movies. I rewatched a bunch of stuff, but I didn't watch any new stuff, so I don't have any movie stuff. But I do have- oh, that's not true, there's kind of a movie in here, because this vlog is going to be mostly about Shakespeare, which comes at quite a surprise to me. I've gotten completely obsessed with Shakespeare, one of my- um, projects a lot like uh, several years ago I wanted to do I had did this thing called the mega list and it was like kind of like after I did my 101 things and 1001 days a couple years later I wanted to do something similar but not exactly the same um, and I unfortunately I couldn't do the mega list my life changed sort of like while I was in the middle of it so I really there's a lot of things in there I just can't do um, and I haven't really come back to sort of like a big challenge like that but anyway one of the things on my mega list which I'm still interested in doing is reading all of Shakespeare's plays and then seeing a performance or a film of all of Shakespeare's plays and this came back to me because I read I read I um I read the book Shakespeare Saved My Life by Dr. Laura Bates. This was part of the I can't remember exactly what it's called. It was like the World Group Read or something like that. The Toronto Public Library participates in this program that is a sort of world uh book club where the title is available for everyone. You don't have to you don't have to be on a waiting list. You can access that title as many people who download it can access it you know it's a library so you don't you only have it for a certain period of time but there's no waiting list so I like I love that um because I love doing I, like I've been trying doing different book club type things and one of the challenges with that is getting the book like especially like I you know if funds were unlimited, I would just buy all the books I was interested in, but often I get stuff from the library, and, you know, if you can't get it in time for a book club when they're reading it, then it makes things really messy. So I really appreciate the format of that. Anyway, as it turns out, I, Shakespeare Saved My Life, I, I was... Like, I had some challenges, some big challenges with the book. Uh, the basic premise, it's the subtitle is... 10 years in solitary with the bard and it's a woman laura bates dr laura bates who teaches shakespeare to inmates and like maximum security uh segregated population like like solitary confinement type of like the highest level you know of inmates and so and one particular inmate who really connected to uh, Shakespeare and really, you know, emerged as a leader uh, within the group and within the community as a leader to, you know, understand and share uh, insights into Shakespeare and sort of insights, how you can use Shakespeare to, for insights to your own life as well. So the premise of it is fabulous. I just was really taken by it, but I, I didn't, I gotta say, I didn't love the book. I had lots of, I actually had lots of challenges with the book. I, from the, even the idea of the fact that it's a memoir, but it was mostly about someone else. And is it still a memoir if it's not about the person themselves you know so that was an interesting question but then there were some other things that I just felt like wow like I felt like we were going in this direction and then it never came back to that point and certain things were brought up over and over again and then left and you never know how they were resolved but I had to come to terms with the fact that really it was mostly about these two people and not necessarily about sort of how Shakespeare affect the prison environment generally. So, and what I actually also realized that one of the big challenges I had is that it sort of feels like it comes in with the assumption that a prisoner wouldn't have insight into Shakespeare, you know? And I was kind of like, I don't, I don't come from that place. Like I don't um, bias groups of people based on their grouping, you know, so I don't think that they're less smart or have less insight or whatever. I just, I don't, I don't believe that. That's not part of my belief system. Just like, I don't think that necessarily academics are smarter, you know, like it's just, you know, it's, it's different, you know, even if there is an argument one way or the other, I just, I don't, I don't buy into that. I, I'm, I'm interested in, about people on an individual level uh, and I'm not going to judge based on their history you know, or their group. So anyway, so uh, that was actually really great for me to under to figure out because I was trying to figure out why the book was really grating on me. And I realized that that's what it is, that the fact that this guy had these keen insights was like such a marvel. And I'm like, 
why wouldn't he? You know, it's great that he did, but I, why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he have insight? Anyway, so it's kind of weird because although I, the experience of reading the book wasn't all that great, it did get me back to reading Shakespeare, which was awesome. So I read Two Gentlemen of Verona. <laughs> And um, it's funny because when I started reading Shakespeare, sort of like I want years ago, like I read several of the plays in high school and stuff. But when I started the project of reading it a couple years ago, I didn't, I didn't, I read this. I apparently read this in 2010. I think, or 2011. I don't remember anything. My notes on it were hilarious. It was like, I, basically, I don't remember anything. There was something about a ring. And now that I've reread it, I'm like, the ring is, like, it's important, but it's not that important. Anyway, but my method to reading it, what I did was, I actually, because a lot of people say watch it first and then read it, but I like understanding, like, because Shakespeare can be interpreted in so many different ways, I like to go to the source first, and even if I don't understand it, and then look at, you know, interpretation. So what I did was, I actually wrote down little index cards of all the characters, Proteus, Antonio... There's, they're not that. Julia and Sylvia are the main characters. Oh, and there was one other guy. But I did them for all the characters because it starts off with. Where's the other guy? I can never, I can never pronounce his name. And this guy. Oh no, he wasn't that important. Who was the important guy? Oh my god. So I'm just talking about how I understood it that much better. And now I'm like, who was the guy? Valentine. Valentine was very important. He was one of the two protagonists, one of the two gentlemen. Thurio. He was really important. Anyway, so what I did was I wrote index cards for each of the people. And then on the back, I wrote what the title is given at the beginning of the play. One of the two gentlemen, uh, a foolish rival to Valentine, uh, blah, blah, blah waiting woman to Julia. So I did that. And then every time, and then I read a scene and at the end of the scene, if I felt like I understood, if I had any insight to the character, their motivations, what they were doing or their actions, I would write it on the back in love with Julia, pro love. Proteus is pro love. I would say sends message to Julia via speed. So it was either, you know, an action that happened or you know, what I thought about the character. And in doing that, I was able to actually understand the story. It was so exciting. <laughs> like, I really felt like I understood the story. There were two things I was kind of like, I don't know what happened. And when I read the Wikipedia page, or I, I was kind of like, is that really what happened? And then when I read the Wikipedia page, there were two things that were noted as, it's often seemed peculiar that, or there's a lot of contention over, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, awesome. Not only did I understand it, but even the confusing bits I understood. Anyway, so the story, like, I don't know, I, it's weird because it's, I, I read it first because chronologically, apparently, it's the first one that Shakespeare wrote. So that was the reasoning. I thought I'd do them chronologically. And then I did also watch on YouTube, there's actually, we found two sort of community theater, outdoor, whole play type of, of uh, videos. And I watched one of them. And I started to watch another one, but it was like, this, as I looked at more and more videos about this one, often it's interpreted as being a Western, which is really weird. There are outlaw characters, but I would certainly not say that the main characters, Proteus and Valentine, were Valent are, are outlaw e. Like, they just, for me, that's not the spirit of the play, but that's one of the things that's so wonderful about Shakespeare is that it can be interpreted in so many different ways. Anyway, so I watched them, and I, it was it was interesting to watch. I do think you really do understand the story on a better on a better level. This one is a comedy. I didn't really see how there was, what was comedic about it. But then after watching it, I was like, oh, yeah, the two characters, there's two characters that have sort of really long passages, and they're sort of like the go-betweens. And what a lot of what they do is comedic. There's also a dog, and a lot of people find the dog funny. The one of the performance I watched had a live dog. Having live animals, of course, can provide a lot of comedy, <laughs> intentionally or unintentionally. So yeah, so it was really exciting to to read and to understand. And I actually read it. I'm shocked. I've never read anything else like this. I read it on my phone. I uh, through the Kindle app. There was a free Kindle edition, and I felt like when I placed my phone sideways like a uh, landscape, I felt like it was well more than enough of uh, a page to actually 
read the text, which is because it's in iambic pentameter. So, cause, so it's not really, really long lines. It's shorter lines. So I was, so this whole thing has just been like revelation after revelation after revelation. Um, so yeah, so that's been really exciting. Um, and I'm going to keep on going. I, my plan was to read Titus Andronicus next. It's a lot more characters. I could not believe how many more characters. <laughs> like Two Gentlemen Verona apparently has the least amount of any show, uh, any play, and Titus Andronicus. And this one's heavy and harsh, and I have seen adaptations, and I do know what it's about. So I kind of want to get it out of the way because it's probably the brutal, the most brutal. Um, and there is a film version. I've seen the Julie Taymor version, Titus with Anthony Hopkins, um, and it's very good, uh, but it is harsh. So, but I might, because I saw on Amazon, I might skip to Richard the Third because I saw this amazing amazing. This is actually a TV series called The Hollow Crown, and it has Richard, or sorry, Richard the Second, Henry the Fourth, Part One and Two, and Henry the Fifth. Henry the Fifth is one of the few that I know very much. And just look at that casting. Ben Whitshaw, Jeremy uh, Irons, and Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> now, I wasn't excited about reading the histories. Now I'm excited about reading the histories. So I'm really looking forward to that. I just randomly found it on Amazon. And yeah, so there you go. Shakespeare, I've really come back to it. It's been really exciting. I hope I continue to enjoy and understand the plays <laughs> uh, because they're such great stories and uh, I'd really love to read them all So and see them all. So there you go. That's my little Shakespeare tidbit for you. Have an awesome day! <laughs>